Hello everyone, I am Kurz, this is Low Man and welcome to Comic Watch. Today I'm delving into the detail behind the second Anna comic, Old Soldiers. Though in this instance I'd prefer to think of it as a 76 Reaper and Anna special. As the last lore comic we haven't covered yet, this will actually be the last Comic Watch done in this style. We'll be approaching these differently in 2017. No comic thus far has as many playable characters in it as this one. Reaper, 76 and Anna all feature heavily, and Sombra even warrants a mention. Important to note that this came out a good few months before she showed up at BlizzCon. If this were the only notable point, it would be enough to make this comic one of the most important thus far, but with the interactions between the characters and the way the comic ends leaves me in no doubt of its significance in the overall canon. I'd say only really Reflections outdoes it, and that's nothing to be ashamed of, love Reflections. We start off with 76 perusing the bounty boards attached to a street wall in Giza, Egypt. This was the first time we'd seen him since Hero chronologically, and given the story arc that this comic has, it's pretty safe to say that the events here are set after those in the animated short. He's looking for an individual that is only known by the moniker of Ghost, and at this point we have no idea why. The bounty on them is for espionage, assault and theft, for what I guess is a large amount of money, and has been placed by someone named Hakim. Not a name we've ever heard of before in Overwatch. 76 isn't alone, a local bounty hunter is also on the hunt, the value of the reward enough to sway what I'd guess to be already pretty dubious morals. Amusingly, 76 has a bounty board of his own on the same wall, presumably with an equally high price tag on his head. As you can imagine, this doesn't end well for Mr. Bounty Hunter. As 76 doesn't know Hakeem or where to find him, it does make me wonder who put the bounty on his head. Have you guys got any thoughts here? The other interesting tidbit here is the Arabic writing high on the wall, which reads, AI is our right. Given the events of Mission Statement and the rise of Anubis occurred near here, who or what would write that, and why? As was already obvious from the large amount of money he's willing to throw at bounties, Hakim is doing pretty well for himself, though given his acquaintances I feel certain in saying that the Akash that built this compound, recruited all those guards, and paid for that mighty fine swimming pool did not come from legitimate sources. Working for Talon probably makes up a large part of this, and we know they're not short of a few quid, although I'd still love to know what their main source of finance is. This comic is yet another incident of us not knowing what Talon are really after. We still don't know why they wanted the mysterious cube on the train, we don't know what the secret project they were after in Legacy was, we don't know why they wanted to kill Takatha Mondata, we can only make guesses as to what their relationship with Doomfist is in retrieving his gauntlet and here we don't really know what they're attempting to extract from the Temple of Anubis. The only information we have is that this comes after the events of Farrah's Mission Statement comic, and that despite Helix locking things down after that, they don't know what they're protecting. Given the Helix guys with Farrah knew Anubis was a god AI, what could they be missing? Are Talon after something else? Something hidden in the temple besides the god AI? What could that be, do you think? Whatever it is, it'll apparently need Sombra's intervention. The rest of the comic is given over to the original core of Overwatch, Sans, Torbjorn and Reinhardt. Yes, and Liao, but let's not go there. As 76 checks out one of the earpieces of the many guards he's taken out, he instantly recognises one of the two voices discussing the Anubis operation, his old friend, Gabriel Reyes. This means two things. While much of Reyes obviously changed in becoming Reaper, his voice did not, at least not significantly. Secondly, the way he says that voice and then rushes in means 76 was not expecting his former colleague to be here. As we find out later, his mission was all about recruiting Ghost to his cause. Amusingly, him hearing Rhea's voice is exactly what led to 76 charging over the compound walls and straight into the trap that he and Akeem had set for Ghost, a person they still believed to be male, so evidently did not know it to be Anna that had been causing them so many problems. He does know who 76 is however, and despite Morrison scanning the base for signs of life, Reaper is still able to get the drop on him, greeting his one-time friend with a right here Jack, and a shotgun shell to the back, a good advertisement for their genetic enhancement that he wasn't killed on the spot. Considering how long the two worked together, and how close they were, it's a little surprise that Reyes knows all of Morrison's moves, an inclination to rush in blindly. This is also our only real insight into the fall of Overwatch itself. Rumour and hearsay always touted the idea of a fight between the two being responsible for the destruction of the Swish HQ but in Reaper's words, we have confirmation. I've been looking for you since Switzerland, knew it'd take more than that to kill you. It's always felt like the most plausible scenario was Reyes leading a malicious coup against Morrison was at the heart of the fall, but that feels like a subject for another day and another video. Anna's arrival, still in her ghost getup, 
otherwise known as her in-game Shrike skin, to save 76 bacon, though there are a few gaps I'd like filled in. Firstly, what is she doing in this area? Clearly she's been causing Talon and Hakeem a whole bunch of headaches lately, judging by the bounty and the trap, but why? To protect her daughter, or to protect the temple and the surrounding population from sinister forces? Perhaps both, I'd guess. Secondly, her rifle. The only time we saw it before this comic was on a tweeted blueprint with Torbjorn and Mercy arguing over its ultimate purpose, while the last rifle we saw Anna use before her supposed death was the Kinamura in Legacy. Has she, like 76, been pilfering old Overwatch watchpoints for technology in the intervening years? I wouldn't put it past her. It's actually not clear if Anna knows Reaper's identity at this point. It's likely she does, but she definitely knows who 76 is, and we see her deploy the full range of nanotech darts available to her in order to help him. Clearly Mercy's fear of it becoming weaponized were realized after all. Seems she knows Morrison just as well as Reyes though, yelling at him for being an idiot, always in the way, always rushing in. But she supports him in the ensuing punch-up before Reaper turns his attentions to her. With her sleep darts having no impact, Reaper seems remarkably unsurprised by this reappearance of a woman and former friend that he believed dead for years. Remarkably, Anna holds her own against the genetically enhanced, not to mention whatever else he's been through, Reaper, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He seems more intent to talk though, his obvious hatred for Morrison dripping through every word, venomously referring to him only as him, his, and he throughout. He's much less antagonistic towards Anna, and despite the fight, it genuinely seems as though he wants to get his own side of things across to her, even if he's still bitter that she always took his side. While Anna is left reeling from the sight of whatever has become of Reyes's face, he takes his opportunity to drive the point home. He did this to me, Anna. They left me to become this thing. They left you to die. They left me to suffer. Note he still pins almost all of the blame on Morrison for what he has become, which suggests that whatever it was began at the fall of Overwatch, and that the popular theory of Mercy's involvement is less likely than others would have you believe. As he disappears into the air, Anna and Jack are left alone in the courtyard, only an unconscious guard for company. Quite where Hakim is at this point, I have no clue. There's a little ambiguity here and I wonder what you guys think about this, but when Morrison reveals I was looking for you to Anna, do you think he was looking for her directly or for Ghost? If the former, when and how would he have learned she survived? If the latter, it seems against his modus operandi to recruit randoms, even if they are posing problems to shady organisations like Talon. It's interesting that he believed her dead, but she never believed he was, despite news reports and the grave bearing his name. His line about his old boss and good genetics, while it could be the guy that trained him and Reyes, I'm willing to bet it's a reference to Reyes himself, who was after all his commanding officer at one point, and certainly falls under the jerk label that Anna uses. The comic ends with 76 effectively achieving his actual purpose for travelling here, albeit not likely in the manner he intended. These are two old soldiers, both of whom the world assumes are dead, but they still on some level feel the need to right the wrongs of the world. For Morrison, this manifests in his desire to right the wrongs of the fall of Overwatch, and bring those responsible to justice. For Anna it's more pure, she simply wants to protect her family. Fortunately, she sees Jack as being family, and knows she has to watch his back as he'll continue to rush in without thinking. That leads us to the square they share together in Reflections, but at its heart, this is simply two extremely close and long-term friends working to help and protect each other. The only issue is, they'll almost certainly be up against a man who once meant so much to both of them. Thanks for joining me on this look back at old soldiers. Who do you think wrote AI is our right and why? What a talent after an Anubis? When are we next likely to see Reaper? If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell if you want notifications of future video releases. And until next time, I have been Kurz, thanks for watching.